Hello and welcome Universe Mode. This is Monday Night Raw. Yeah, we did it for once. How about that? But yeah, we are here for Monday Night Raw. It is a night once again where all the talk of the town is in regards to the Bullet Club and the Dangerous Alliance. They're both at Survivor Series sealed. They match up and they are war set to transpire, set to take place. The only question is, are both sides ready? It seems not. It seems like there are some problems going on all around the shop and there is a lot of worry, especially in the midst of the Bullet Club. Here tonight we will be hearing from the World Heavyweight Champion Dolph Ziggler to kick things off after he took out none other than the, than the WWE Champion Bobby Fish last week, laying him out in the ring with the super kick. After that happened, it is now a question of what happens for the Bullet Club. What is the lineup going to be heading into Survivor Series? And are they ready to take out the Dangerous Alliance and prove they are the greatest faction in the world today? We'll see what happens when Raw kicks off. But we're going to go then to our main event. And the Cody Rhodes Open Challenge continues on. Rhodes didn't defend his championship last week and was rather engaged in a, a bit of a battle of words with Tyler Breeze. Well, here tonight he'll defend his championship again, and of course we don't know who it's going to be against. We'll find out in the main event. Promises to be an interesting night of action for sure, but before we get into any of that, let's hear from the World Heavyweight Champ. And here he is, the World Champion himself, Dolph Ziggler, fresh off of flooring none other. Then Bobby Fish last week, what a moment that was when he got decked by the super kick. All eyes are on Ziggler right now to kick things off on Raw. This won't be the only times we'll see Ziggler. He'll be in action later on tonight as well. But as for right now, the floor belongs to Dolph and we are all about to listen to the words of greatness. He is the world champion for a reason. And let him say what he has to say. And there we go, right from the bat. Ziggler talking about what he did last week was not for himself, not for Raw, but rather for the man in charge of this whole operation. He did it for Adam Cole. He did it as a measure of revenge to prove to his heart that he is not only loyal to the Bullet Club, but loyal to Adam Cole as a whole. And there is Ziggler. Oh, he's bringing a greater smile to my face. I'm even happier right now. Dolph Ziggler stating there that rather than say it to a camera, He'd prefer to say it to his face. So he wants us to all stand up and welcome the leader of the Bullet Club. Back on Raw, Adam Cole, baby! Yes! He's here! Cole is here! Oh, what a happy, what a sight for sore eyes. Adam Cole, back on Raw after being taken out two weeks ago by Roman Reigns and Bobby Fish. Well, now he's here tonight, and now we get to listen to the words of the leader of the Bullet Club. Man, does he look better than ever as well. Does he look more ready than ever? Let's see what Cole has to say to Ziggler and to us all. Cole kicking things off by saying that he was very thankful for what Ziggler did last week, for taking out Fish, for proving that he doesn't deserve to stand on top. The Bullet Club is better than anyone else. And at Survivor Series, Adam Cole will gladly prove it to everyone else. Whoa, Ziggler quick to jump to the, quick to jump to the gun there. What do you mean Adam Cole will prove it? He thinks Cole's still hurt. He doesn't think Cole's at 100%. He thinks Cole should sit out Survivor Series. In the mind of Dolph Ziggler, after what happened last week, only one man deserves to stand beside the Good Brothers, and that's Dolph Ziggler. Adam Cole inclined to disagree with him. Bringing up a fair point, to be fair. He's the leader of the Bullet Club for a reason. This is a Bullet Club's problem. And no offense to Ziggler, but when you attack the leader, he is forced to fight. And at Survivor Series, he will fight for the Bullet Club. Ziggler's kind of snapped as a result of it. Ziggler starting to go off on Cole. Guys, don't, don't argue. I, I, I don't want you arguing. Please, no. This is not what we needed this time. Ziggler believes he deserves to be the one leading the Bullet Club into Survivor Series because if it wasn't for him, the Bullet Club wouldn't have any control on Monday Night Raw. Adam Cole, quick to disagree in his own right. I believe that, sure, you're the brain. You could be the brawn of the operation even, and you can go around attacking everything, but you would be nothing if not for the mental mindset of Adam Cole. But if he wants to prove himself at Survivor Series then so be it. Dolph Ziggler stating that 
It was a wrong thing to argue with Colber there, calming things down and just getting back to normal. He promises at Survivor Series that if Cole leads the operation, if he's the one telling them what to do, Ziggler and the Good Brothers will make sure to embarrass the disgusting, dangerous alliance. And Dolph Ziggler continues on there saying he won't be doing it for Raw. He won't be doing it by any stretch of the imagination for the Raw general manager. He'll be doing it for the Bullet Club. He'll be doing it for the right reasons. And he'll be doing it for none other than Adam Cole, baby. Because if it wasn't for Adam Cole, there'd be no Bullet Club. And there we go. That's that settled. The Bullet Club had a bit of, a little bit of tension there. And Ziggler looks awfully smug about everything. But the Bullet Club seemed to be sorted out in that regard. So just in case you didn't catch that, allow me to explain. At Survivor Series, it will be Dolph Ziggler, Luke Gallows, and Carl Anderson against Bobby Fish, Roman Reigns, and Mark Henry. What a lineup that's going to be. Adam Cole going to be leading the way and telling everyone just what to do. This one is going to be a great one at Survivor Series. But Ziggler isn't done for tonight. Oh no, by no means whatsoever. Ziggler is in action late, later on tonight. But before we get to any of that, we're going to kick things off with a man known by James Storm in action. Well, here we go. It was a, it was a great way to kick things off with the Bullet Club, but right now we have James Storm in action for the first time since what he did two weeks ago when he took when he took out his tag team partner. I guess we should say now former tag team partner in uh, in Drew McIntyre essentially left him for dead and went about his own business. We saw Storm being asked about it last week and he just walked off from the interview, had no intentions of answering the question and went on his own way. Now, tonight, Storm is in action for the first time. Since then, Storm has not revealed why he did what he did. Rather, Storm just walked up to the Royal General Manager and said, I want competition. And that was it. James Storm has got this match here tonight against Xavier Woods to prove to us all that he deserves that chance, that he deserves to stand out in the singles action. Like I said, no one knows why he did what he did. There is a lot of questions still unanswered about it. But here tonight we are going to be seeing him in action regardless. And just seeing what will be answered about that. But I know Storm's in action here and it's a bit of an interesting thing. For the people who watch Raw, but man alive, am I excited now for Survivor Series more than before to find out that that's going to be happening. Ziggler going to be leading the charge. Champions on one side. That's going to be incredible. Think about it. The World Heavyweight Champion and the World Tag Team Champions going up against the WWE Champion. And that's the only champ they've got on their side. That's the best part about it. The other champs are going to be in action in a different match, of course. We'll talk about that more on SmackDown Live tomorrow. But as for this one, man, it's going to be great. Champions on each side. The world champion of each show on, on either side. I think Survivor Series. We may be... Survivor Series had a hell of a lot going for over these last few years. You look back at the last year when it was the NWO against DCW and how personal and how heated that rivalry got. This one, it, it feels like it's on that level. NWO against DCW was by far and away the most heated and personal feud I think we've ever seen when it comes to a group against a, a you know, a, a group against a, a brand, I guess you could say, or anything like that. But this one feels that way. It's just two groups trying to prove who the better one is. But it's gone from just being about trying to prove who the better one is to literally attacking each other each and every week now on their shows just to prove it. And last week, you got to say, victory went to the side of the Bullet Club, I believe. Sure, Gallows and Anderson were decked by Reigns and Henry. But it was the end of the night that we paid attention to when Ziggler decked Fish. And then the night after, uh, on SmackDown Live, when Roman Reigns was laid out and strewn through the announce table by Luke Gallows. A great week for the Bullet Club in that regard. And the Elite, of course, over on SmackDown Live. 
had they had a bit of a quiet week for them, but at least we know what's happening at that event. So now we're going to just briefly turn our attention away from that and just focus on the in-ring action, I believe, because I am interested to see if Storm's uh, declaration for wanting to be a, a, you know, on his own for trying to branch out on his own the way in which he did, will it pay off? As he takes on Xavier Woods here tonight. Oh, double axe handle in the back there. As Storm goes to work right now on Xavier Woods. Oh, good counter by Woods there. This is, you know, this ain't exactly a, an easy first opponent for James Storm by any means. So it's a good test for him to see how he can hold himself. Big boot in the head there. Could have been, you know, he could have got it maybe a little bit more difficult. Could have got maybe Kofi Kingston from the New Day. Or maybe Kofi is still recovering from his beating last week. As a, as a result of uh, Luke Gallows. Xavier got some good reversals going for him right now, though, to be fair. He is making Storm's life very difficult for him. Suplex, cradle, neck breaker there. And Xavier Woods jumps right into the cover, looking for victory here. Not going to happen. It's maybe a singles match, but it'd still be a good win for the New Day following on from their... Uh, Unlucky week last week, suffered a loss to TM61, of course. And as I said just a moment ago, the loss uh, to Luke Gallows as well. Xavier Woods doing a really good job right now on James Storm, who's having a lot of difficulties branching out on his own. Up to his feet gets Storm, and looks like he was playing possum short arm clothesline there. Really caught him on the money. And here we go, the movie hit last week on, uh, two weeks ago even on McIntyre. The backstabber, how apropos, given what he did to McIntyre. And there's a two count though on Xavier Woods. Storm all of a sudden turning this match around into his kind of style now. This beaten down, very, I guess you could say redneck kind of offense where he just tries to pummel into his opponent until they can't stand anymore. But Woods has still got a hell of a lot of fight left in him. What's Woods got in mind here now? Gonna take him to the ropes indeed he is oh my god Xavier Woods is really willing to risk it all right now no way Woods will do this Woods lining up Storm he's gonna take flight here is this a smart idea from Woods it oh suicide dive he got him on the money the way Storm was looking there it seemed as if he was braced to have something in mind perhaps get out of the way of it but he didn't he had all of that suicide dive and both men are down. Woods far better off though than, oh, maybe not. Storm getting up to his feet right away as well. But it's Woods who sends him back into the ring. Storm had a bit of fight left in him there and Woods is now looking to try and capitalize here. Gonna call Storm up to his feet. Will this play out the way he wants it to? Last call, super kick! I think not. Caught him out of thin air. The last call. That should be victory for James Storm. And it is. My goodness. What a kick. What a win for Storm as well. Well, it's victory for James Storm in his first match as a singles athlete. And he is certainly proud of it. Oh, Storm doesn't look like he's done here, though. Storm looks like he's far from done. In fact, a steel chair in the ring now. Woods is out. Woods is defenseless, and Storm's going after the leg here of Woods, targeting it, smashing the chair into it. And a big a big shot with that chair there. Woods is rolling around in pain. Storm has just laid out Woods to send his own kind of message. Well, I did not. It was. Storm is really desperate to prove that he is in no mood to uh, play around with anyone, it seems, or is in any mood to... Just get a victory and move on from there. Pummeling into uh, Xavier Woods there. My goodness, that, those chair shots were vicious. Woods' leg got battered in. I hope the guy's going to be all right, but you know, I may, I may not have the the best things to say about the new day, but that was very far taken by storm. But I guess if you want people to notice you, if you want the attention, <clears throat> you'll do whatever it takes to get it. Not to be fair, it was a smart idea by them, but here we're going to move on. We got this match to look at TM61. You know, the team that has got two wins in the last two weeks now and has been doing a great job since, but now comes the real test for them. Are they ready 
because it is time to face the brood. This is where the real test for, for TM61 comes into play because it is time for these guys to find out where they stand on the Raw roster. Their wins over the Revolution and the New Day were strong, but this is the big test for TM61. Can they be a standout team of the future for the Raw Tag Team division, or are they yet just more cannon fodder for the Brood and the Bullock Club? This is where they are really tested. This is where they are taken to their limits, and this is where we find out that all-inclusive question. Here comes the Brood towards the ring now. The Undertaker leading the way, his brother Kane accompanying him, and the leader of the Brood himself. For the first time in some weeks, Mordecai walks towards the ring, walking through the flames of this entrance. If this leader didn't show just how much of a, a sentient being he believes himself to be, well now you have the proof from that. Look at the lifeless expression though of these two men as they come towards the ring. Not here for their own purpose, not here to enjoy themselves, not here to prove that they deserve the shot at the tag team titles, merely here to prove their value to their leader, to their all-inclusive leader that is Mordecai. Undertaker, of course, has been here since September, and I imagine this is a man who hates every moment of being in the group. He did not want to be here he was forced into this group when he couldn't defeat his own brother. And since joining forces, the Brood has been without a doubt, I would say, the scariest and the most destructive duo in some time. I've said it time and time again, when this team meets the Bullet Club, it is going to be worrying. And if that man on the outside is there, if Mordecai leads the way, we're in for a close bout between the two teams. Here tonight, we see if a third team can be added to the mix. We see what TM61 are capable of, and we'll see if it's going to be a close match or a walkover for the Brood. Nick Thorne will start this one off, and we're going to get Kane on the other side as well. Well, here we go. Mordecai's come up for this one as well. He's come to pay a close eye on the action in this one. The leader of the brood, making sure that his followers are doing a good job for him. Oh, what a power slam there as Kane starts things off against uh, Shane Thorne. This is not going to be an easy matchup at all for TM61. They've had a strong debut thus far, but now is the real time for them to test themselves. This is where they're in for a hell of a, a lot of trouble, to be fair. The Brood with pummeling shots there in the head, or rather Kane with pummeling shots to get things underway. Drop kick there. Shane Thorne early on being beaten down by the big red monster. And here comes the tag. Oh boy, the Undertaker's in. This one ain't looking good already. Flying shoulder tackle by the Phenom. And this one has already got way out of hands. For TM61, the chance of coming back already is looking slim. Mordecai watching on, and maybe that's just getting more agitation out of The Undertaker. This is a man who has been forced into this group by trying to free his brother. And instead, as a result of losing, had to join the very group he swore to destroy. And he is suffering an awful lot as a result of it right now, but TM61 I think are suffering even worse as they get beaten in here. Shane Thorne though with some fight and him suplex to The Undertaker. I didn't think he'd be able to pull that one out. He has had barely anything going for him in this matchup, but that isn't stopping him from trying here against The Undertaker. And that didn't last that long to be fair. Tag made again, Kane back in. And the double axe handle into the arm. Look at the strength of this man. Lifts him up on his shoulders with ease there. And hanging him out to dry on the ropes. Shane Thorne trying to crawl over to Nick Miller there. He makes the tag. Nick Miller in. And needs to do something desperately here for TM61. Kane goes down. He's back up to his feet. But, Shane, but Nick Miller's having his way with him right now. Sends him into the Brood's corner. 
What a, what a great tag in there by Nick Miller, but it was only temporary. There's the counter by Kane, and all of a sudden it's back, it's back into the Broods' way of uh, working in this match today. Oh, oh, look at that. Knee being dug into the throat. Or rather, the, uh, the knee being dug into the back, which digs the throat into the ropes. Kane is just having his way right now with Nick Miller. Great counter there. Miller looking for something. Gets a reverse DDT. TM61 still got some fight in them, showing a lot more fight than a lot of teams have recently. In the corner they go here. Tag made. Double team move here by TM61. Back suplex by Miller. Swamped on by uh, Thorne. Into the cover here after it. Hoping for the best. Oh my god. Undertaker blitzed his way in there. Miller trying to take it a shame to, uh, to uh, the Undertaker right now. They're both taking it to the Undertaker. Kane's the legal man in this one. And he makes sure that Shane Thorne remembers that. Kane now having his way with, Shane Th with Nick Miller. With a back suplex. Yeah, that'll make you pay. TM61 just got flattened there. And what could have been one of their biggest chances of coming back in this one may well all be over. Shane Thorne in a lot of trouble here as Kane goes to work. What will Kane look for now? Is it going to be what I... Th nope, I thought he was going to go for the sidewalk slam. Seems not Russian leg sweep. Kane's going to go up to the top rope, isn't he? Yes, he is. It seems if Kane is set to want to end this one for the Brood to please Mordecai. And Undertaker's just going to watch on. The flying clothesline by Kane. Shane Thorne tangled over himself, essentially. Oh, my God. Look at the strength of Kane there. Slams him down with ease. The beatdown. At the hands of the brood. And this is why this team is without a doubt the number one contenders for the tag team titles. Tag Major and Undertaker will get the, will get the uh, chance maybe to finish this one off. Up on his shoulder. And oh, Snake Eyes in the ropes. That looked nasty. Thorne once more just getting beaten down. Miller finally gets back up on the apron. But it doesn't really mean anything. Oh no, there we go. That was what Mordecai wanted to see. He wanted some blood. And he has gladly got some blood on his hands now. Undertaker in position. Ready to strike. Choke slam to Thorne. And I think I know what's coming up next. No. Oh, DDT first. What is Taker going to do now? He's just walking around. He's in so much control of this match. He can take as long as he wants. Look at the blood dripping from the face of Shane Thorne right now. He has nothing left in him. And here comes the end of it all. Thorne is done for. Tombstone pile driver. Thank you for coming, TM61. The cover. No, Thorne's in the ropes. And the Undertaker deeply frustrated at that clubbing blow after blow into the open wound of Shane Thorne this is, uh, in, this is enough right oh my god Thorne's fighting back he's on his own but he's going to give it his all here how has he managed this by himself Shane Thorne is trying to fight back against the brood Kane tags himself in now and Thorne will go after him Harakarana there to send him down how has he got this fight within him? I don't know. Can, no, Undertaker's just going to watch on. He's going to fly. No, he's not. Oh, this is it. Choke slam. Thank you for coming. But good night. One, two, three. The Brood are your winners. And once more, catching someone out of thin air gifts them the victory. The Brood are your winners. And Mordecai seems awfully pleased about what he just saw. Oh, Shane Thorne, though. I feel sorry for the guy. He got beaten down in this one. Busted open. But that was kind of a, a way of setting down TM61. You're a good, you know, you're a strong team. You proved you're a strong team. But the brood is something else. And after Survivor Series, when this is all out of the way. And the Brood and the Bullet Club are destined to do battle. 
I know it's going to be a worrying, worrying time for the Bullet Club. Well, there we go. Victory for the Brood. And I hope Shane Thorne's going to be alright as well. Jesus Christ, two guys who look like they're in a, a bad shape about them after what we've seen tonight. We're going to move on now to our next contest. It's going to be Natalia and Charlotte in one-on-one -on -one action. Should Charlotte pick up the win, she'll be the number one contender for the Raw Women's Championship at Survivor Series. Let's see if she can pull that off. We'll find out. That match is up next. Well, here we go. Women's division matchup. Should I say Paige's division matchup coming up next? Because it doesn't matter what either of these women can do. It doesn't matter what any woman in this division can do, whether they can excel or not. They are still, at the end of the day, obsolete compared to our Raw Women's Champion. You know, of course, the SmackDown Women's Championship will be defended at Survivor Series. And now, of course, we're finding out that the Raw Women's Championship will also be defended at the event. The question is, though, can Charlotte pick up the win here tonight? She has had two wins over the Raw Women's Champion. One, okay, I will totally give her the, the victory for two weeks ago. She made Paige tap out. I can't argue against it. Last week, though, Paige snapped, attacked her with a chair, and we agreed that that was not the Bullet Club way of doing things. We sat Paige down and made her realize that you can't go around making mistakes like that. We understand we've all got a temper. We understand it's worrying times for the Bullet Club. But we can't show our frustration. We can't show our worry. Otherwise, there'll be even more trouble on our way. And the last thing the Bullet Club can afford to do is lose the titles that we have fought so hard to get our hands on. Well, anyway, here is Charlotte, the potential number one contender by the end of tonight, coming towards the ring. I mean, Charlotte... Over these last two weeks, you know, she's really excelled from kind of just there more so than anything to now a, a forefront for the Raw Women's Division. But you look at the number of women who have tried to step up the page and failed. And I'll say this time and time again. Gail Kim, Carmella, Alexa Bliss, Becky Lynch. The list goes on. And the failures continue. Charlotte is, you know, Charlotte's a great athlete. And I said it last week. I've said it over these last two weeks. She's the daughter of Ric Flair. She's going to be a great athlete. But one thing she's not, she's not Bullet Club. And if you're not Bullet Club, you're not greatness. And that's not an opinion. That's fact. And if you need me to prove <clears throat> that it's fact, just look at it at the Bullet Club. We have eight members. I had to do a little bit of a count there, not going to lie. We have eight members of the Bullet Club. Five on Raw, three on SmackDown. All eight of them hold championship gold. That's all I need to say to prove that the Bullet Club are the greatest tag team. Not the greatest, no, not the tag team. The greatest force out here today. The Dangerous Alliance, three men, one title. The Four Horsemen, I hate to bring up my own brand to bring up to <clears throat> for this point but I got to four guys no titles you look at NXT the DCC three guys no titles sanity four guys no titles all right they've only been around two weeks but or three weeks or whatever it is but you know DCC have been around a lot longer to be fair and they haven't got any belts to their name but Bullet Club meanwhile every single member aside from Adam Cole I just realized so it's seven, seven guys, uh, eight guys with seven titles, has a belt. But at the end of the day, Adam Cole's the leader of the Bullet Club. He doesn't need a title to prove his point. He doesn't need a title to show that he is greatness because he is leading greatness every single week as he will lead greatness into Survivor Series when Dolph Ziggler and the Good Brothers pick up the win and regardless of what Charlotte does here tonight, whether she's the number one contender or whoever else becomes the number one contender, greatness will overcome the number one contender. Paige has done it on so many occasions, and she'll do it again. Survivor Series is not a night for the Bullet Club to be worried. It's a night for the Bullet Club to prove our success. The only one I've got my eye on, and the only one I can't really say too much on, is the one involving the Elite and the Four Horsemen, because that's my own brand. But even then, do I believe that the Elite have the capabilities of overcoming the Four Horsemen? Yes. There's a reason why they all, they all hold titles. There's a reason why Kenny Omega, the leader of the elite, 
is this year's King of the Ring. It's because he's greatness. It's because the Young Bucks are greatness. Just a fact. This match continues on here anyway. Natalia's been having her way a little bit with, um, with Charlotte. Perhaps the beatdown with that chair last week has really done a number on her. Drop kick there. Charlotte sidesteps it. Can she get something going here now? Good counter there by Natalia, but didn't get anything of it. Caught, caught, uh, caught her in an Irish whip. And she's going to bring her back in the ring here with a nice suplex. Lovely suplex as well. Very vertical suplex. And Charlotte once more in a spot of trouble. Getting hard elbows into her head there. As Natalia continues now to make life difficult for the woman who stands. A great chance of becoming number one contender. Natty by nature there. Will that set up for the sharpshooter? Dragging her away from the ring, from the, the ropes, but she is not going for it right now. Stomp into the chest. No sight to the uh, sharpshooter just yet from Natalia. Got something in mind here. Suplex, maybe. Charlotte, not interested. Counters it. Oh, ran right into that backdrop, though, did Charlotte. And a follow-up drop kick. Natalia's really having her way right now in this one. I think the sharpshooter could be on its way any minute now in Natalia's mind. Double underhook suplex. Oh, that's beautiful by Charlotte. Got, wormed her way out of that one, but wormed her way right back into another move by, by Natalia. And that is why she is a heart at the end of the day. Her ability to just all of a sudden find a counter to anything. And look at this now. Brought her in for an Alabama slam. Whiplash effect there for Charlotte to endure. Closing in, honing in on the legs now. Trying to make sure that Charlotte ain't going to get out of no sharpshooter. She's going to be forced to tap out. A victory here could guarantee a number one contendership for Natalia, maybe. Very difficult for Charlotte right now. I think she is hurting from that attack last week. Uh-oh, power bomb incoming by Natalia. Nailed it on the money. Cover on Charlotte here. No, Charlotte kicks out. Natalia trying to get the crowd on her side here for victory. She is really taking it to Charlotte here. I'm surprised. She's just getting beaten down right now. Working on the arm for maybe... I don't know why she's working on the arm. There's nothing to gain by going after it. And Charlotte making her realize that. She pulls out the reversal there and gets a, a backbreaker of her own now on Natalia. Her leg caught in the rope there as well. It's going to hurt quite a bit. And Charlotte now, what's she going to do? Has her in a wheelbarrow position and just dumps her down on her face. Charlotte all of a sudden has finally found a way to turn this match around for her sake. Nice drop kick. Charlotte bringing her into the middle of the ring here. She's going to look for the figure eight. She's going down by the legs, but... Well, if she was, Natalia pulled out the counter to it. Oh, look at that by Charlotte now. Big kick in the side of the head. Great bit of work there. Charlotte hoping that that huge kick will get her victory. Cover on Natalia who kicks out right away. And now Charlotte getting a little bit uh, underhanded there for victory. Looked like she was trying to rake to the eyes. Didn't happen. Charlotte lands on her feet. Beautiful bit of work there. And now all of a sudden... She's got something going, Spear! And that could be the opening that she's looking for. Natalia down and may well be out. Oh no, she turned around, but Charlotte turns her right back around. No escape for her this time. Charlotte finally going to get it on. The figure four first. And then she'll transition into the figure eight on Natalia to try and force her to tap out, to send Charlotte to Survivor Series, to get her hands on Paige and that Raw Women's Championship. Can she get it? She's got it locked in deep here. Will Natalia be forced to submit? The longer this goes on, the worse it gets. Natalia taps out. Natalia taps. Charlotte's going to Survivor Series. Charlotte will face Paige for the Raw Women's Championship at Survivor Series. Oh my. 
This one's going to be a good one now. Charlotte and Paige for the Raw Women's Championship. And here comes Charlotte and here comes Paige even getting her hands on a new number one contender. Paige could hardly wait. It seems Paige Turner. Oh my God, just immediately after winning, Charlotte with no time to recover. Because here's Paige, ready to send a message, ready to lay out her number one contender. This is what I wanted to see. This is Paige asserting her dominance over her own division. And ain't no one gonna tell her what to do otherwise. Charlotte just getting thrown around right now by Paige into the ring post. And then once again, another power bomb to lay her out. Paige has more than sent a message, but she's not done yet. Paige rubbing that into Charlotte's face. She's basically calling it a prelude to Survivor Series, but not just for her retaining her role in this championship, but for everyone in the Bullet Club. Because what happens at Survivor Series will prove that this is the Bullet Club's house and no one can come knocking on their door thinking they can take it down. Paige, speaking on behalf of not only herself but the entirety of the Bullet Club, Survivor Series morale is getting higher and the likelihood of victory seems to be following suit with it. Wait, hang on, speaking of the Bullet Club, speaking of the Bullet Club, we gotta go backstage now. Apparently something's going on with Dolph Ziggler. Oh my god, no! It's Fish! Where did he come from? No one was meant to be here tonight. We did a scan of the building. And there was no Dangerous Alliance members in here. How the hell did Fish get in the building? We gave the Bullet Club the night off. Only Cole's here. And he's not clear to compete. Oh, come on! As if, as if they knew this was going to happen. How the hell did they find out? This is awful. This can't be happening right now. Bobby Fish has the world champion in his clutches. He's just throwing him around. Someone tell him. Someone do something about this. This wasn't supposed to happen. He's supposed to face Marty Skrull in a moment from now. Ziggler though fighting back. That's the world champion. That's the better champion. Refusing to give in. Against Fish right now. Go on Dolph. And Dolph has got an awful lot of fight left in him. Fish into the locker room area now. But he's quick to fight back as well. Ziggler doing the same though. These two men going back and forth. Just like last week. Fish though. Big chop. But Ziggler once more able to pull out the counter. Come on. Come on Ziggler. Lay him out for two weeks in a row. Fish gone in there though with that Russian leg sweep. That carpet is hardly going to protect Ziggler. There are no Bullet Club members here like I just said. Paige is hardly going to be able to do anything either. But come on, even in a moment like this, where is Adam Cole? Just to try and do something to protect the world champion. What is going on? How are we letting this happen? Fish with a Falcon Arrow onto Ziggler. But it doesn't look like Fish is done. He's got Ziggler in his clutches and he's just walking out of the room right now. He's sending Ziggler wherever he wants and Oh my god! The world champion sent into that. I felt the pain from here. Ziggler still refusing to give in. Still fighting back here. But Fish is slowing him down in his tracks right away. Fish is running now. Where's, why is Fish, why would Fish be running? Oh no, he's he's got something else in mind, I think. And he knows he can get the world champion to follow him. Fish thought that one through tactically. We're in the, we're in the office room of Daro and Arlo right now. That's one of his secretaries, totally. Just standing there watching. Oh my god, no, no, Fish, don't. Fish just is taking things too far. There's no one here to stop him. DDT on the table. Oh my god. Ziggler could well be out from it, and Bobby Fish loves it. Fish just decked the world champion. He may, well, he may well have concussed him, and now he's getting the hell out of Dodge before anyone can show up. Absolutely sickening. I am honestly disgusted by what I just saw. I can't believe it. Again. Again, we were played for as a fool by the Dangerous Alliance. 
and somehow they're able to find a way to stand on top of us. Oh, it's awful. It is awful. I, I, I'm disgusted, but I, I guess there's only so long we can talk about it because there's other things to look at right now, and that's the the uh, United States Championship Open Challenge here tonight. The main event, Cody Rhodes will defend against whoever it's going to be. Dolph Ziggler was supposed to face Marty Skrull, so maybe it'll be Skrull. In this moment, I, I don't know, and I'm completely lost. I really don't know what to say. I am all over the place about everything. All right, well, maybe I can reflect back because maybe we'll be in for an amazing main event because here comes the man who will challenge for that US title, the leader of the Yes Movement, Daniel Bryan, is heading towards the ring for this one. For the Raw fans, this is really going to be a great match to watch, but for me, I'm, I'm still going to be a little bit lost in my mind I I just can't believe it how did how did he know and he acted alone there was no one else here we did this we checked the building before anyone was here we checked the building before Raw started we checked when everyone was here as well just to make sure and no there was no one we told Garrels and Addison they could have the night off Adam Cole wasn't clear to check but he wanted to stay here and Ziggler, left alone, isolated, is somehow jumped by fish and laid out on the, on the desk of the Raw General Manager. I'm, I'm stunned. I don't know what to say. I honestly, do, I, I'm at a loss for words. I, I, I guess I gotta look past it for now. I guess I gotta focus on a few other things because... We've got this main event in front of us here, the United States Championship up for grabs. Brian and Rhodes, is a, which will probably be an incredible match, to be fair, but, man. We've got to sort something out. We're under two weeks away from Survivor Series now. And we're still getting jumped like this. I, I don't know what to say. I, how are we letting these things happen? We're going to need another meeting about this. Maybe on, uh, maybe on SmackDown, be forced to get a revenge of some sort, but I'll have to see what's going to, uh, what's going to happen. I'm, I'm genuinely, I'm a mixture of frustrated and a little bit disappointed as well. I mean, how did no one stop that? How did no one see that it was coming? It just, I, I don't know. I'm really confused. We've got to turn away from that and turn our focus onto the main event. We've made it this far. It's time for the United States Championship to be defended. Rhodes and Bryan, one-on-one -on -one for that title. Rhodes, of course, the last time he defended was in a... Uh, a um, oh, man, I'm all over the place. Sorry about this, but it's really difficult to focus right now. It was uh, two weeks ago in that... To, uh, uh, in that uh, bout with Tyler Breeze, which ended, of course, in the, in the no contest, double count out. They talked about it last week, and Breeze wanted to, uh, uh, sorry, Cody wanted to defend the championship tonight against him. But um, Breeze refused. He said he didn't want to, and now, as a result of that, though, we've got this match, which should be very interesting. Something that was. Also interesting to look at last week was the change of Tyler Breeze, the Ugg boots, the, the, the flamboyant jacket, all of that had kind of faded away and it was just Breeze coming towards the ring, just like Tyler Breeze, the person coming towards the ring to talk about whatever he wanted to talk about. It was very, uh, very weird to see. But as for right now, we're going to focus on this matchup. Da uh, Daniel Bryan, a former United States champion, he has... Being that he was a strong United States champion when he held that belt as well. Some time ago now that one was. But we're going to win it back here tonight. Cody Rhodes looking to retain the title again. Of course he's had two of these open challenges. And to be fair he's only defended the championship in one of them. And that was against 
Adam Cole the night after winning it in the first episode of this series of Universe. Oh, I brought him in there for that gut buster. Both these men, great technical wrestlers. Cody Rhodes, of course, son of a, the American dream, Dusty Rhodes. Daniel Bryan, just as, as boring as I claim him to be, is at the end of the day an incredible technical wrestler. Rhodes looked for something there. Bryan pulled out a great counter. But it was countered back there by Rhodes. Back and forth by both men here. As this match continues on, it's kind of feeling out process. What the? What just happened to Rhodes' legs? I don't know. Look at this now by Daniel Bryan. Lovely back suplex. He's going to take it up to the top rope here. Would he look for the flying head? But does he have something else in mind? Elbow drop, but he missed the target. Rhodes rolled out of the way right at the last second there. Great uh, countering ability by Cody Rhodes. And now he'll capitalize. Alabama slam to Bryan. Great opening here for Rhodes. To retain that title, maybe. Brian, though, crawling around. Gets out of the way. And oh, look at that by Brian. Great reversal into the S lock. He's got it locked in, but right next to the ropes. Kind of easy there for Rhodes to get himself out of that one and continue on this match now. Daniel Bryan, airplane spin, round and round and round we go. Lovely, uh, I guess, a, a, well, not really a lovely move, but a smart move. So he can wear down Cody and force him to get confused and make a mistake. But it's Brian, the one making another mistake. As Rhodes gets out of the way of that top rope elbow drop again. Rhodes now, kicking the gut. Will he look for this suplex cross Rhodes? Indeed he will, and he got it on the money. Cody Rhodes planted it. And he'll go into the cover. To retain the title here. There's one. There's two. And oh, Brian kicked out. He was not going to fall down to that one. He was not going to let that move finish off his chance of being champion again. Triangle armbar now by uh, Cody Rhodes. Not all the time we see him lock in a submission, but he gave it a good try there. Daniel Bryan, though, being the submission expert that he is, knows how to get out of a few moves. Cody, though, knows how to inflict a few of his own. Incredible reversal there. And once more, though, he's sent for a ride by Daniel Bryan. But it's a counter to the leg again. These two men really know each other well. So much back and forth action going on right now. Something else to behold. Half enough suplex there by Bryan. Lovely bit of work. And once again, the cravat suplex. Cody Rhodes is being tested an awful lot right now as he tries to hold on. To that title. Up to the top rope. Now Brian goes. He hasn't been successful so far. But he's going to go for the flying goat. There's the headbutt. On to Cody Rhodes. And into the cover he goes now. Will it win him the title? There's two. And there isn't three. Rhodes just not getting that shoulder up. Good on the referee for seeing that. Look at the... Uh, Brian there, a little bit hunched over, perhaps feeling the effects of this one. Well, Rhodes is feeling the effect of every move that is hit here. An awful lot of suplexes for him to endure right now as Daniel Bryan continues on his fight to try and become the US champion again. And Rhodes is in trouble here. Brian with a great opening for the running knee. And he gets it on Rhodes. On the money. Brian could win the title here. Caught him right. Caught him flush. Into the cover he goes. On Rhodes for the title. There's two. There isn't three. Rhodes kicks out. Brian can hardly believe it. You saw him almost dejected as he pulled himself up there. Brian knows he has got to be on the verge of winning this one. But he's getting worn out now the more he tries. Cody suddenly got some fight left in him. Alabama slam once more by Rhodes. But Brian's right up to his feet. This is incredible. Over the top rope he goes now. Brian going to bring him back in there with that suplex. Absolutely outstanding back and forth main event. But Rhodes sends him into the turnbuckle here. Busted open and all. Cody Rhodes refusing to give in. This is how much the US title means to both men. And Rhodes is going to try and hang on to it here. 
The suplex crossroads once more. He got him! That whiplash effect. And then the punishment of landing on the mat. Rhodes may well have retained his title here. This will be incredible if he can. The cover with one, two, and oh, Brian kicks out. Rhodes deeply frustrated with it. But he isn't going to let it falter him. He's still going here. 450 by Rhodes now. How much more can either man pull out on the other? How much more fight does either man have? Rhodes rolled up here by Brian, but his hand was literally on the rope there, so there wasn't much he could do about that. Look at these good kicks now by Brian. Kicks and strikes. Sends him into the turnbuckle. And he's going to work on the open wound now. DDT. Tornado DDT. That's not going to do Cody Rhodes any favours. These two men are so, so close to winning that title. It has to be said. Spinning kick in the face. Cover here by Rhodes. But it's a kick out at one by Brian. Brian trying to claw his way up to his feet there. But Rhodes just denying it. Getting a little bit more frustrated there as he nailed that big stomp. He's going to take flight here, calling him up to his feet. We've seen it backfire earlier in the night. Could it backfire here? Drop kick. Ro uh, Rhodes overshot. And I think Brian ducked under as well. Up, uh, Daniel Bryan calling him up now. Catches him with the drop kick. And he goes into the cover to win the title. There's one. No, Brian. Brian getting a little bit. Like he was shouting into his face. Like he had a few things he wanted to say to Rhodes. Very surprised that he decided to do that. And Rhodes makes him pay. Sending him down to the mat. That was very smart. But what can Rhodes do here now to try and finish this? And also, what can Brian do to try and finish this? It's going to be a third Alabama slam. Rhodes nails it again. No way either of these guys have got much fight left in them. Look at Rhodes. He almost doesn't know what to do. It's like he doesn't have any fight left in him to do anything. Rhodes. Will he go for it? Kick in the gut again. A third crossroads suplex set up and connected. The middle of the ring. And I think this one could be it. Cover on Brian. And with one... Two, three, Cody Rhodes retains his United States Championship. What a main event. What a match. What a bout. Both men did everything to try and capture that title. But by the end of it all, Cody Rhodes is still your United States Champion. Incredible. Just wow. That was an outstanding main event. That really took my mind away from what we saw just a moment ago. Congratulations there to both men. Cody Rhodes retains the US title. And even after beating Adam Cole, of all people, for it, is still earning my respect. As he is making that title a very, very prolific title on the brand of Monday Night Raw. Victory for Rhodes there. But the main talking point is not about that. It is about what happened tonight. Ziggler laid out. And now I worry what the condition of Dolph Ziggler will be ahead of Survivor Series. Cole isn't clear to wrestle. Ziggler could well be in jeopardy. It's a worrying time for the Bullet Club. And I don't want anything bad happening. And I certainly don't want the Dangerous Alliance to get a win from it. I'll end this episode of Raw. See you tomorrow for SmackDown Live. Thank you guys for watching. Take care, guys. And ta -ra.